Well, I think uh, the annotations for this game by Hans Mock are in the public domain. Um, it was a kind of uh, amusing uh, uh, taking the mickey out of uh, Ninzovich's uh, overprotection concept. And the reason I want to touch on Ninzovich um, is, as I say in, in the roadmap video, uh, for the evolution of chess style, that Nimzovich was highly influential. Although he never became world champion, you know, he did actually also beat some of the world champions. He beat uh, Alekhine uh, and Arfhan um, with the white pieces, for example, in one very dramatic game. Um, but my system had a number of interesting concepts, and, and one of the more uh, uh, profound ones uh, was this idea of overprotecting the centre, but I think it's it's actually linked to not having to occupy the centre with pawns. So if we consider that premise was kind of like uh, as assumed as gravity, the effect of gravity, and um, for the hypermoderns to challenge that central assumption about chess that you should always be occupying um, the centre of pawns, it's, it's quite radical. And overprotection may, maybe is, is a part of that because. Um, in the, in this fictitious game, um, you'll see that White's pieces are strong anyway, if, even though White hasn't got much of a pawn centre. He's only got one pawn which he's overprotecting. So um, I'll share with you some of the annotations, if I can, within this 15-minute video. So but Kmok says, um, an ingenious example of my system by Aaron Nusevich. Um, so Anderson st uh, started the sacrificial style, Morphy and Grunfield the purely attacking style, Steinitz the positional style, Tarash the scientific style, Lasker the style of styles. <laughs> Sorry, so this this is very uh, relevant actually for for our, our style series. <laughs> Capablanca the mechanical style, Alakine a style as brilliant as sunlight, but it's generally uh, uh, it is a generally known fact that originality and modernism was introduced by me as my own personal inventions. <laughs> And enthusiastically imitated without being fully understood by the world of chess, the whole world of chess. <laughs> so uh, we we had the styles in a nutshell there up to this point. Uh, Mock, Mock continues <laughs> for the ridiculously small sum of ten marks. The reader can confirm all this in my monumental work, my system, published by B. Kagan. Before my time, chess was so naive and undistinguished. One of the two brutal opening moves, each one involving a vulgar, obvious threat, a common banal sacrifice, a painful elementary bestiality um, <laughs> raw chatmate, such, uh, such more or less was the course of the chess games before my heyday set in. Then I appeared on the scene and the chess world paid heed. The hegemony of matter was shattered at the stroke and the era of the spiritual began. Under my creative guidance, the chessmen, hitherto nothing but highwaymen, pirates and butcher boys became sensitive artists and subtle instruments of immeasurable profundity. But why waste words? Accompany me, D Reedy, to the dizzy heights of the following game. So after E6, uh, <laughs> H4 was played, <laughs> which uh, Kmok annotates um, my very oldest and latest thought in the opening. To the chess addict nurtured on Spiner's convention, this move com comes like a slap in the face. But calm down, dear reader. After all, you cannot be expected to understand such moves. <laughs> Forgive me, it is not your fault. Until now, no one has opened your eyes and ears. Wait just a little while, and there will be pass uh, before you a miracle of overprotection, of more than earthly beauty. I, assu I assume that I rightly s surmise that you are quite familiar with my great theory of overprotection. <laughs> okay, so Black replies D5. Black, of course, has no suspicion of what is coming and continues serenely in the classical style. E5. So we see here the overprotection point E5 has been set. Um, Kmok annotates um, a move of elemental delicacy. We detest as a matter of principle such words as power and strength. In the first place, such banal expressions make us uncomfortable. And in the second place, we, we like even less the brutalizing tendency which su such uh, words imply. Wherein lies the beauty of e5? Why is this move so strong? The answer is as simple, simple as this is astonishing. The move is strong because it is weak. <laughs> weak, uh, that, that is only in the traditional sense. In reality, that is to say, it is not a move, but the pawn on e5 that is weak, a tremendous difference. 
<laughs> in former times, it is true, it was customary to reject any move that was considered, uh, that created a weakness. Today, thanks to me, this view is obsolete. <laughs> for, for look, my dear reader, the fact that the pawn is on e5, uh, it obliges white to protect the pawn more and more until at last the state of overprotection arises as if it were of itself. But as as we have seen in my system, overprotection is practically equivalent to victory. Hence, it follows automatically that the weak move, e5, is a certain road to triumph. The rest is more than, uh, more or less a matter of technique. <laughs> so, c5, all according to famous president. d4. So here it is quite clear that it's more profitable for white to provoke c5 and then to play d4 rather than the other way around. If white first plays d4, then there follows c5, then white's d-pawn is under attack. Under attack. But my clever transposition of moves changes the situation completely. For now, black c-pawn is suddenly attacked by white's d-pawn. <laughs> c takes d, what else can black do? Now, h5. All very clever and original and, decis and, and decisive. Of course, the ordinary run of people would envy me my, my spark of genius, but I cannot follow my line of reasoning for even three... But cannot follow my line of reasoning for even three paces. Outdo themselves in sneering at me with poison dropped epithets. Bizarre. The text move creates confusion in the whole black army and prepares for the annihilating invasion of the queen 18 moves later. Queen b6. Naturally not knight c6 because then bishop b5. Why would, she, why would black just play the French defence, only allow the Roy Lopez move, after all? <laughs> now, if I might interrupt uh, the annotations here, <laughs> uh, you, you'll notice, actually, that uh, Bishop B5 loses a piece. But, you know, this, this is the problem, I think, with a lot of players. You know, they sacrifice the idea of strategic crush for little details and finesses in the position. And you can't really get that. You know, if you want to really strategically crush, you know, players you know sometimes you've got to you know just forget about the details and go with the flow i think i think that's what uh M mock is trying to imply here with these mocking annotations <laughs> that there's a little detail <laughs> missed okay so queen b6 so now h6 and a, a, a very curious dullard would never hit on this deeply conceived pawn sacrifice knight takes h6 after g takes h6 white is an even more comfortable game now queen h5. The reason for this becomes clear after the next move. g6. Black threatens to begin a successful siege of the weakening of e5 with bishop g7. Okay. <laughs> uh, but white forestalls this. Queen h2. And you'll notice, you know, that we have we have the elements of overprotection on the series now with queen on h2. <laughs> to every fair-minded observer, this move must come as a revelation. All the previous maneuvers now become clear. White has completed the development brilliantly and proceeds to overprotect e5. Against this, black is helpless. So knight f5. And now bishop d3. Note the splendid cooperation of white's forces. While the e-pawn and the king's bishop completely blockade black's position, the development of the overprotective forces takes place behind the broad backs of these sturdy blockaders. Knight c6, and then we have knight f3. As a, as a rule, this is a routine move, but here it is strikingly original and occupies a place in the treasury of my intellectual property. <laughs> h5, old stuff. B4, a deep trap, as we will soon uh, become ta apparent. Bishop G7, black black, how black must have rejoiced when he anticipated his formidable op opponent in the occupation of the long diagonal. <laughs> but, <laughs> Bishop F4, how bitterly disappointed he must have been to realise that B4 had only been a trap, and Bishop B2 had not been intended at all. <laughs> Uh, the position of black bishop on g7 is now quite pointless. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> bishop e7 would have been relatively better. So bishop d7. And now we have knight bd2 and rook c8. Black no longer has any good moves. King e2. And again, an extraordinarily deep move, White sees through Black's plans, and additionally he prepares a particularly powerful combination of his strategy of overprotection. Knight takes b4, just what White was waiting for. 
Knight e1. This was the point of the previous move. Black is now forced to exchange off the attacking bishop on, on, on d3. But with that, even the white's king's knight enters the fray with fearful effect on d3, while the square f3 becomes available to the queen's knight. Surely a grandiose piece of strategy. The fact that I'm a marvellous player, even if the whole chess world will burst with envy. So knight takes d3, knight takes d3. Naturally not c takes d3, which would have been quite inconsistent. The pawn on c2 is unimportant. And black only wastes precious time by capturing it. So rook takes e2. And now rook a e1. White continues his overprotection with much, without much ado. A5. The counterattack has no punch. <laughs> black would naturally like to get a pass pawn plus a rook on the seventh, but it is too late for that. King d1. Now the menacing rook must scurry back for the capture on a2. It must be too dangerous. <laughs> so. Uh, rook e2 and now king e7 introduced into tournament play by myself c note to white's 14th move the king overprotects e6 rook h e1 now rook e8 now knight f3 completing the overprotection of e5 <laughs> okay so we have everything overprotecting e5 here <laughs> from a distance and you'll note that white's uh, central occupation with pawns is minimal here bishop f8 now black threatens to complete the overprotection of e6 by playing knight g7. <laughs> okay, so black's black's kind of overprotecting, as you can see, all his pieces on that square. So he's threatening knight g7. <laughs> okay, but white has prepared a brilliant combination. g4, much stronger than the obvious bishop g5 check, etc. h takes g, and now queen h7. Now, one must clearly realise the mastery of understanding position which went into white's eighth move, which was queen h2. g takes f3, had back continued over protecting knight with knight g7, there would have followed bishop g5 check. Let, let's have a quick look at the refutation of black's over protection. Bishop g5 check, <clears throat> f6, bishop takes f6 check, King f7 and knight g5 mate. So that's an important uh, note there. <laughs> so queen h7. G takes f3 was played. And now bishop g5 mate. One of my best games. I'm proud of it only because her systemson is one of my, uh, one of the strongest Scandinavian players. The game made an overwhelming impression on the players and the spectators as well. On my, as well as um, on my opponents. The game has become famous in Denmark as the immortal overprotection game. Please leave any comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.